Welcome everyone. We're here today talking about how to harvest and dry and store the aerial above ground parts of the plant. So we've talked a little bit throughout the course about different kinds of medicine making, we've talked about how to make water-based medicines, how to make tinctures, how to make oils, and in each situation we've talked about using those plants fresh and then using those plants dried. And so what we're going to be doing today is looking at some examples of wild of plants that are growing here in my garden. They're not actually wild because most of them I've planted. Um, but we're going to talk about when do we harvest them, how do we harvest them, and then if we want to use them fresh, they're right here ready for us, and if we want to dry them, what is that process of drying them, what will that look like, what are the different ways that we can do it, and then how do we store it once they're dried. So this is actually sort of a part of the importance of the overall medicine making piece, and it's a very important part of um, herbalism, I think, because I do think that meeting the plants in their environment and being with them when they're growing, being able to see the live plants around you versus just purchasing dried herbs, there's a very big difference there. So. Um, I encourage you as much as possible to spend time outside learning to identify plants, observing what their natural habitats are like, what kind of conditions they like to grow in, and if you're able to have a garden. Um, the kinds of harvesting principles that we're going to be talking about today, when to harvest the plants and how to harvest the plants, is going to be the same whether we're talking about plants here in my garden or plants that are growing out in the wild. The big difference is that when we're harvesting plants that are naturally growing in the wild, that's a practice called wild harvesting or wild crafting. Those plants we need to be more conscious about how much of them there are. So they're part of a natural cycle in the ecosystem where they are reproducing naturally and we need to know how much we can safely harvest so that we don't um, have a negative impact on that naturally growing wild plant. Here in my garden, these plants I grow, I know that some of them reseed themselves, some of them are perennial, so if I harvest the flower, the root will, the root will continue to live through the winter and they'll have a new flower next year. Um, and some of them I know that each year I need to replant from seed. But because I'm the one that's sort of managing this here garden ecosystem, I'm able to sort of harvest the plants as much as I want, so to speak. Um, because I'm not relying on the natural reproduction as I would be in the wild. So we will talk about wild crafting and principles for wild harvesting, but it's very important that you be mindful of your environment when you're harvesting. And it's also very important that you, that you be respectful of the plants. The plants are um, their own being, and they're here offering their medicine to us. Um, and here in the garden, I grow them with the intention of, of taking care of them and then harvesting them for medicine. So we have that sort of mutual understanding. But when you're off wild harvesting, those plants are not necessarily there for your purposes. They're there as part of a much bigger picture. So you want to be respectful about how much of the plant you're harvesting and what other kinds of plants and animals and environmental factors are dependent on this plant's existence, right? So if you go into an area where there's a plant that's a really special pollinator and you harvest too much of it, you may be threatening other species that are depending on that plant for pollination. Um, and for, you know, for food. So here we are, beautiful pollinator. <laughs> 